Hey everyone, welcome back to New Classic Designs. Today, I thought I would go over how I made this epoxy wall art. I'd never really worked with epoxy before, so I didn't want to try making a table or a charcuterie board or something where the dimensions had to be something very specific. I thought I would try something where I could really play around with it before I ended up with the final project. And this was amazing. If you want to get into epoxy, I strongly suggest you try something like this because it was really fun to play around with. And the end result was amazing. The bright white turned out perfect. I don't think I would change anything about this. In fact, I may even make a few more versions of this down the road. It was really fun and I'm really glad how it turned out. This is how I made it. I hope you enjoy. So I started off by getting this piece of black walnut. The length of the project was perfect for this piece, but the width was too much. So it had this crack down the middle and I just had to tap it with my ax a little bit and I got this really natural split down the middle. It was really nice how it ended up. So my next part, all I had to do was clean up the edges and take the bark off. Epoxy doesn't stick very well to bark and to wood at the same time. So it's a really good idea to clean it all up. After you do that, you need to sand off all the remnants of the bark. Now you can do this with regular sandpaper. However, I used my grinder with this wire wheel brush. They don't really make this grinder anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link one in the description that I think will be a really good way if you ever wanna try something like this. This wire wheel worked great. It made it really easy. If I ever suggest any tool or anything, it's because I feel like it's the best version of that tool which will make your project easier, both price-wise and efficiency. And as you can see, this wire wheel brush attachment made really short work, but I do suggest you wear a mask because the dust can get pretty bad, worse than a lot of other projects. So if you're not used to wearing a mask for this, I strongly suggest you do. Next up, I pulled out my planer because the actual thickness of the board was a bit too thick. It was just shy of about two inches. And the end result of this project, I really wanted to be about an inch thick, maybe a touch thicker, but no more than that. So I ran this through my planer. Now when you're using a really hard wood like this, you should probably make a lot of very light passes. Um, it might be a little bit too much for most planers. This is a pretty heavy duty planer. It can handle quite a bit and I still made really light passes. If you like this, I'll also link this in the description as well as the other tools that I use. Now that I've got the board down to the dimensions, very similar to what I want, I had to build the form for the wood to sit in while I poured the epoxy. Now, melamine is usually the best kind of material to make epoxy projects in. I'm sure you've seen in other videos. However, the most effectiveness you get for your dollar is getting a four by eight sheet. And it's really hard to manage a piece of melamine that's four by eight. It can be pretty heavy. So I'm using this Craig Rip Cut. It is so handy. I've actually got a pretty big table saw, but as long as you have a straight edge, this is so much easier to use than a table saw. I find it even easier to use even if you have a sliding arm on your table saw. I made a lot of projects with this. It's super easy. It attaches to most hand saws. I'm going to link this as well because it's not really an expensive tool to have, but it can really make it easy to work with very big pieces of wood, which in the end can be pretty expensive if you get smaller pieces, so it's really great bang for your buck. After I got the pieces cut down to the dimensions I wanted, I thought I would go one step further and tape everything down with some Tyvek tape. It's essentially masking tape, but it's very strong 
I understand you can use a couple different tapes, but Tyvek tape is not really expensive and you get a massive roll of it. It's really handy for quite a few projects actually. I think I used one roll to tape up my entire shop when I was weatherproofing it and I still had tons left over even for this project. The epoxy doesn't really stick to melamine, it also doesn't stick to Tyvek tape. So this is a little overkill, but like I said, for my first project, I want it to be as safe as possible. And I'm really glad I went that extra step. You'll see why soon. But now that I have everything taped up, I had to drill it together to make sure I had a solid form for the pour. Now that everything was put together, I pretty much had to make it watertight. Epoxy, when it's in its liquid form, is very thin. It's not like peanut butter or something thicker like that. It'll pour very similar to water. So you need to make sure you don't have any cracks in your form so nothing will leak out. And like I said before, epoxy is extremely expensive to work with. You don't want to lose any. And since it takes days to cure, that's lots of time for anything to find a crack through. So use a little bit of silicone and seal all of your cracks and that'll make it nice and watertight and will protect your project. After I did that, it was time to pour the mixture. This is Ecopoxy. I think a lot of you have seen this product before, but if you haven't, it's extremely simple to use and it's amazing. I'm super happy I went with this product. It was super easy to mix together. It was just two parts of the epoxy to one part of the hardener. So as you can see, mixing it was not that hard. I just did eight cups to the epoxy and four cups to the hardener. Now that you have all of your liquids mixed together, you have to stir it. The instructions stay, you gotta stir for five minutes or until it's clear. I stirred quite a bit longer than it was clear, but I thought I would go the full five minutes just in case. Again, you don't wanna mess this up because it can be a pretty expensive mistake. So I just pulled out my phone and watched the time while I sat there and stirred it up. It was a long and boring process, but the end result came out great. Now if you'll notice, I'm using just a regular spoon that you would use for most kitchen and baking stuff. This actually mixed it perfectly. I get a lot of my disposable stuff from the dollar store. I don't feel like if it's going to be disposed of quickly that I should spend a lot of money. And this stuff worked out great. The jug was super easy to handle the epoxy with, the spoon mixed it really well, and the measuring cup. All of the stuff from the dollar store were really great additions but I had to make the color. Now that's usually quite a bit more pigment than you would normally use, but I absolutely wanted to make sure this was as bright white as possible because the wall it was going on is gray and the white really made the walnut really pop. So it came out beautiful. I poured a very thin layer on the bottom of the mold. This was one to check to see if I had any obvious leaks coming through. And two, I really wanted to coat the bottom of the piece so that epoxy would get into all of the cracks and nooks and crannies. But since this is wood in basically a puddle, it was gonna float around. So once you get your piece inside, you have to weigh it down or anchor it down somehow. I used clamps and some wood. You absolutely do not wanna drill it down though, for that's one gonna create holes. And from what I understand, epoxy does need a little bit of movement when it's curing. It heats up quite a bit and things might shift around. Now that I got everything weighed down, it was time to pour the rest of the mixture in. 
I made sure I got it in that vein that I was really hoping to fill in with epoxy first and then I filled in the rest of the surrounding area. Once I used up all of the mixture, I wanted to make sure I got it in as many as the cracks and nooks and crannies as I possibly could. So I used this end cut from a piece of wood that I had laying around and it really made sure it got it into all the areas I needed it to get into. After about five days went by, I came back and I saw it was fully cured. They say it's fully cured after about three days, but it didn't seem like it to me. So I waited for two more days and at that point it was absolutely perfect. It was pretty much rock solid. So it was time to get it out of the mold. Now I told you before it was a really good idea to use the tape before you made this pour and I'll show you why. It made taking this mold apart really easy. As you can see every time I pulled a piece off it was still in perfect condition. So now instead of spending more money on a new mold and shredding this one, I'll be able to use this one for the next project since the piece I split in half was pretty much the exact same dimensions. The biggest problem here was just getting the suction out. A lot of people use wedges to kind of squeeze it in, but this block on the edge, since I had enough of a lip to bang against, worked just as well and it didn't even touch the epoxy. I also had a lip from the underside that I was able to bang out a little bit, which got the suction released, and that means I was able to pull off the bottom part perfectly. And as you can see, the entire board is left in perfect condition and can be used for another pour. Now since my long edges were pretty much bang on because I spent a little more time on the measurements of the form, I just had to cut down my edges a little bit. The vein filled in perfectly. It looks great. Now I had to get it down to the thickness that I needed. Now I watched a couple videos from the actual maker of this epoxy and they said that you can use a planer to clean up after you've poured it. However, I do not suggest you do that. While it made cleaning up the epoxy itself a lot easier and I brought it down to the thickness that I wanted quite easily, it actually took me an entire day to clean up all of the epoxy uh, shreds and stuff out of my planer and my dust collector. I had to take everything apart, clean it all out. I was pretty much done this project for the entire day. So if you have a planer, I strongly suggest you maybe put together a router sled instead to get this down to its final dimensions because this did a number on pretty much every machine I used it on. After that, it was time to sand. I started off with a pretty aggressive sandpaper. It was 60 grit. Got down the entire piece. When you're working with very, very bright white epoxy, it's really hard to see. So you basically got to make sure you get every corner and keep an eye so that you don't miss anything. Uh, you got to feel around a lot too because it is kind of hard to feel between the different grits. But you're going to need a bit of an aggressive grit to make sure you get it down and get all the epoxy pieces off. 
This is a bit of a long process, so be ready to take some time here. However, once you get it down, you can move up your grits. I believe I went from 60, then to 120, then to 220. Don't quote me on that because I don't have the paper in front of me. great thing about how this turned out was this was really perfect. Going through all of those different sanding process really made it very smooth to the touch. It was almost like silk. It's like if you closed your eyes you wouldn't be able to tell there was two completely different materials put together. So I do strongly suggest you take a good amount of time and really get your sanding in there. The vein of white came out perfect. Now since this was going to be hung on my wall, it's not going to be like a piece of canvas art. So the back, in my opinion, was going to be just as important as the front. So when you walk past it, you can see on the side just as much as you can see on the front. So I decided to add a chamfer on the back to give it a little more detail as you walk by. And remember what I was saying about the epoxy going everywhere in my machine? Well there you have a visual representation of how bad it was after I opened everything up. So this time I thought I would just cut it up and then vacuum it after. If you ever decide to try an epoxy project in the future, just know it makes a huge mess. When I use more expensive woods such as maple or walnut, I always like to give it a good wipe down with some water first. That really brings the grain out. It'll clean a lot of the sanding dust out of it too. But when you bring the grain up a little bit more, you give it another good sand with a high grade sandpaper. In this case I use 220 again. And it makes it so smooth. Again, it's like touching silk after you do a process like this and it makes it really good and a really good recipient for your sealer after. I give it another good wipe down with a dry cloth and I get it ready for the lacquer I'm about to use. You don't need very much of this stuff. So I just poured it a little bit lightly and it's extremely easy to use. You actually just keep wiping it in until it pretty much all feels dry to the touch. The great thing about this stuff is you can use it on both epoxy and wood. So you don't have to be too careful about getting on just one piece of the project. You can actually work it through the entire piece and it'll work out great. And as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. The shine is incredible and it's really smooth to the touch. So for the other side, I decided to try, instead of just wiping it in, I would again use an end cut from a piece of wood and spread it around all nice and evenly. This made it possible to use even less because as most of you know, sealants and lacquers can actually get kind of pricey. So I was able to use the little bit and really spread it around all nice and evenly before I wiped it in. This made wiping it in a lot easier as well.
I do strongly suggest you don't wait too long before you do both sides. As you know, when you get one piece of wood more damp or more wet, it can make things warp a little bit. So you really want to keep those times minimal. Now to mount this project, it was going to be a pretty simple French cleat system. Spraying the cleat system was a bit of an annoying process, but I didn't want to start cutting corners now. I didn't think you were going to be able to see the cleat system, but just in case you did, I thought I would cover all the bases. After that was painted and dried, it was time to mount them on. Now, I didn't know what was going to be the difference between drilling in to part of wood and part epoxy. So I made sure that I mounted these on just the wood part of the project so everything would be balanced. This project wasn't really all that heavy. However, to make sure that it wouldn't lean or dip in one area, I did use a top and a bottom cleat system because otherwise I don't think it would have sat right on the wall. Now all I had to do was mount it on the wall. This wasn't really too difficult. As long as you made it level, it would have come out looking good. However, I did make sure to drill into two studs because I wasn't sure if the weight was going to be able to handle it. And there it is. In my opinion, probably the best idea for anybody's first epoxy project. As since it's something that just hangs on the wall, your dimensions don't need to be absolutely perfect. So again, you can really play around with the end process after you make your pour. But it's something that looks really cool, super amazing, and I guarantee you not very many people will have one. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, think about hitting that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time on New Classic Designs.